Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Get Real with Morton. And today I am joined by uh, Konstantin, using his full name, uh, Melnikov, our resident Russian. I always say, I'm always making a big deal. You are, you are, you like that. <laughs> I love it, I love it. But actually, uh, what we're going to talk about today, it's, Gon's a very interesting, actually very interesting uh, fellow because his marketplace covers a very broad sweep of Sydney. Like, he seems to be going against the trend of being specific in an area. He's got lots of hot spots around. So he's very big out west where he sells huge houses, million dollar seven, four, six million dollar houses. Yeah, three million plus, I guess. Three million plus. Put it, put it in the price range, yes. And then you're also a leading agent on the Lower North Shore uh, where he's selling apartments, Crow's Nest, St. Leonard's, Mossman and around there. So very different markets and different place in between. So what we're going to talk about with Con today is actually his view on the market, considering the fact that he's in so many different marketplaces and what he is seeing across the board, because that's really the big question that I don't know. Everyone asks me, and I'm not sure what the answer is right now. So I mean, Con, start of it, what what do you think is happening in the market? Well, the markets are very different. That's yeah. the that's the thing. So you you've got pockets, then you've got areas, and then you've got suburbs and regions. And okay. I think looking at uh, Western Sydney uh, acreage properties, uh, prestige and premium segment there, very different to the Lower North Shore market with the apartments yeah. and and houses and yeah. it's just completely different ball park game but I think what we've noticing is um, as far as markets are very different the buyers behave are very similar yep. and it's trending right across the Sydney mm. so, so what are you seeing there look I'm I'm seeing definitely a very high level of hesitation from the buyers at the moment yeah that's the word of this podcast is hesitation because that's definitely because the buyers numbers are not bad like when you look at them as a total thing. you do look at the numbers of attendees and they're actually quite you know um average on the borderline and you sort of making like a story that the units are performing not that bad and the house is looking good um but the actual numbers doesn't uh transition into offers mm -hmm. or serious mm -hmm. engagements yep. because again that hesitation is what's stopping people and where do you think that hesitation is coming from um well i think hesitation is definitely uh there's a financial pressure mm, interest rates the, uh, interest rates at the moment expectations of them going down at some point or being steady at mm. that level uh everyone feeling that pressure and I think uh, a lot of people find themselves in uh, markets where they don't need to make rush decisions mm. like it used to be where the market is overly hot and mm. you can't actually sit for one week and think about it mm. because it's going to be a uh, missed opportunity. Well you were saying before like when we were chatting before before we got started you were talking about the number of people that are wandering around the place with cash. Yes so what I think I'm probably seeing, especially in the Western market, this uh, probably underestimation of uh, bias with uh, cash abilities mm -hmm. and uh, their financial pressure is a little bit less because they're not dependent on mortgages as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. And even if they are, it's a very small portions. Mm -hmm. uh, so those people are coming in into the market uh, with the power of negotiation mm. and they feel that they own the whole mm. uh, market here because mm. they are already cashed up mm. and they're not dependent on any yep. other factors. Uh, in fact, some of the buyers in, in, in the gain in, in the Western market, for example, been um, selling large portions of rezoned, redeveloped uh, land blocks and they've been cashed up with 15, 20, 30 million dollars. Someone with that much uh, you know buying capacity can buy whatever they want and they cannot be um you know rushed by mm. agents or by the market mm. conditions because there's definitely mm. you know it's funny this is because you've got vendors definitely have not adjusted and part of that is do you think because obviously last year was bizarre where we had this incredible incredible leap up of interest rates yet extraordinarily prices went up went up yes and i do see that um prices at the moment probably going through the adjustment mm. um, 
that adjustment we could see anywhere between five, seven percent, but I think mm-hmm. in some cases even more mm-hmm. than that. Mm-hmm. The vendors are still actually delusionally uh, sitting in uh, prices, which is backed up by the last year yeah. and year before that, yeah. and even like COVID times when it's mm-hmm. everything went up and the interest rate was low. Mm-hmm. Um, very hard for them to come in terms mm-hmm. to the market conditions mm-hmm. at present, mm-hmm. and especially to the market values. And I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? Because <coughs> So we've seen ourselves across the business, our listings have gone up to levels that we haven't seen before, which you think is great. Uh, but you've got your vendors are all jumping in to try and capitalize on a market that actually may already have turned. That's right. And unless mm. you representing unique or rare property to buy, um, the buy is actually taking a longer time yeah. to make a decision. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, much harder negotiations, longer days on market, mm-hmm. and that substantial increase been seen across the board, like west, uh, north, yep. city, everywhere. Yep. So properties tend to take much longer. So I suppose the thing is, you know, buyers do also get overconfident where they feel like they're holding all the cards so they then don't make offers and then I can tell you what happens is it all comes back on the one weekend which we're, we're hoping for but yep. yeah yeah so you know so if you, for buyers watching this like yes there is an opportunity for you at the moment but if you need to buy something then buy it so just talking about let's switch to the lower north shore and also because a lot of landlord activity happening down there where you know, do you think generally there's a sort of move of landlords trying to get out of the market? Yes, I think so. Um, I think there are a number of landlords and even the ones who like say bought from me two, three years ago, been sitting on the rentals with us and then they now are reapproaching with a very serious intention of selling it. And it's not because their investment not working well, it's actually working the same way it used to be three years ago, but the pressure of that interest rate is mm. no longer given the return they would like to see. Mm. And if they having more than one property underperforming, mm. they, you know, coming to a very quick conclusion that something needs to be offloaded. No, no, you're right. Because yeah. we've definitely seen, um, even though the rents have gone up a lot too, the yep. interest rate's gone up even, even more. higher. Yes. So it's not actually a good story. Do you think, or oh, there's a lot of talk in the press right now about negative gearing and getting rid of it. Do you think that that's something that may fuel more landlords to get out? I think so. Mm. I think I think it's actually putting pressure even further on them. Mm. Um, same as the talk about interest rates as mm. well, being, you know, uh, end of this year, uh, there are a number of people expecting that it would be rate cuts. Mm. Um, well, there are a lot of vendors who are hoping for rate cuts. That, that's exactly right. I don't think the buyers are thinking that. A lot of sellers actually expecting that mm-hmm. as well. Uh, in the current uh, situation where they've been on the market for two, three months with no results, mm. so they're hoping something will you know, mm. change after that. Mm. But reality is I think we, we're far from it. Yeah. Um, I just feel like we pretty much will be in the same sort of market conditions up until mm. first quarter of next year. So I suppose the thing mm. is because despite everything that we've just said, which sort of sounded a bit gloomy, you are actually transacting. So so Con's one of our top agents and people are selling. So what do you think is behind that? Do you, do you think people are feeling that the economy might be getting worse? Do you think they're wanting to minimise their own risk? What do you think sitting behind that? Look, I think uh, people transacting, that's that's true. There are buyers who's coming in still paying premium prices in some instances, mm-hmm. which sounds like, you know, nothing is selling, but then someone come and pay premium uh-huh. price. Yeah. Which there confuses are us. Very well. confusing market. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very true. So we did have situations, in fact, where uh, properties going above expectations because of some features or interest mm. to that property particular. or maybe particular creating competitive environment on that particular listing. So mm. you see those things and you think, well, it's not too bad. And then you mm. see a couple of other sales at the higher level and you think, mm. well, my, maybe it's not the market, maybe it, mm. something else is not mm. not going right. And then uh, there are some other properties which have been uh, normally performing quite well, but staying on the market substantially mm. longer. So I think if, they've, if, they're, if it's a good property, like, and you've got these cashed up buyers who are like, right, I will compete on that, but yes. they're not prepared to compete on stuff that doesn't tick the boxes. Th- that's ar- that's yeah. exactly right. I think buyers become more picky and choosy because mm. of the stock availability. Mm. And even so, you do hear very confronting uh, comments like, there's, no st- there's nothing available. 
there are things available that are just simply not suitable to this buyer mm-hmm. and they d- exclude them immediately mm-hmm. as being a bit picky. B- being picky, yeah. So as soon as something came up which actually fits to everyone else's uh, mm-hmm. requirements, all of a sudden mm-hmm. that property creates so much mm-hmm. interest and momentum where price is, o- uh, is mm-hmm. actually going above the mm-hmm. expectations. Yeah, so interesting. So I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? Like to summarize all of that, it is a patchy market. We're not 100% sure what's going on out there, but there's definitely some conservatism from buyers and, as you say, hesitancy. And I suppose for vendors who want to get a good outcome out of that, they really need to take note of that. They do. They actually need to recognize the market values because Mm. that's what the buyers are looking for. They all would like to Mm. make sure that they're not overpaying in the current market conditions. And as soon as the property represents value to the buyers, that's when the sale happening and also that's when that's when your greatest chance of getting competition which is going to push it up push, up, push so, it up that's so right so people find that hard to trust in that don't they that whole sort of idea very much so yeah. very much so because uh, it's very easy to make a decision mm. what's uh, neighbour property worth and what mm. they should do and shouldn't but when it's come back to you to sell mm. your own property mm. all of a sudden uh, mm. the logic gone and mm. uh, you know it could be sometimes uh you know, misled information being received from the uh, news, etc., thinking that the condition mm. of the market is actually different. Mm. But the reality is, mm. if your it property is. is on the market more than yep. two months, yep. you need an adjustment. Hundred yeah. percent. So, so I, I, I think that's a, a pretty good sum. Of the summary of that is, you know, listen to your agent, trust him, and do what you're told. <laughs> like I wish if you if you if you would like to get a result yeah, at the no, end of the day, if you want to get a good yeah. result, just go with that. So anyway, well that was uh, that was uh, get real with Morton. Uh, thank you very much to Con Milnikov, who thank you, is Ian. a superstar here at Morton, and we're very grateful to you. And this decision to migrate from Russia was a good one. Uh, we're always <laughs> we're always grateful for that. Uh, but anyway, very interesting to hear those insights. And um, anyway, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.